go. Come on, up on your feet. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. No, seriously. Squat jump. Up, 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 up. Come on, guys. What? What? Who's a rower here? Who's a rower here? That's it? One? Lead the way. Let's go. Lead the way. Come on. I don't want all the blood to settle in your butts, all right? So, come on. Let's go. Don't be shy. Come on. Here we go. Up and at him, guys. As high as you can. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I'm 54. I can, I can do this. Let's go, let's go. Okay, I want you to feel it right back here. You feeling it right back there? Come on. Thank you very much. What's your name? Keith. And what's your name? Tanner. Keith and Tanner. Thanks for standing up and, and leading the way. So, yeah, um... I'm a rower, and clearly, based on my age, this is a sport you can do for the rest of your life, right? I, the two people who inspired me most were, when I started rowing, were 80 years old, Bill Tunzing and Roger Barbie. And I thought, wow, if that's what 80 looks like, I want to do this. I want to do this sport. So I got started because I used to put my kids in summer programs. And I thought, well, if they got to go do something that they don't want to do, I'm going to go do something I don't want to do. And I took rowing. So I'm from Big Rapids, Michigan, which is a small town. We got a, you know, a little, there are no rapids in Big Rapids, Michigan, okay? <laughs> there's, there's a little river that's like a creek, so there's no rowing. I didn't know rowing from Adam. I didn't know anybody that rowed. I'd never heard of rowing. So I took this rowing course, right? Eight people in a boat we pushed off from the dock and I knew immediately immediately that I found something that I loved and I can't tell you why honestly I can't even tell you why but this is a sport you either love or you hate there's no middle ground in rowing am I right rowers yes there is no middle ground in rowing you will never work as hard at anything than you will at rowing. You will never feel pain, burning lungs, arms that go numb, legs, your thighs burning. There's no other sport like rowing. <laughs> and guess what? Everybody can do this sport. And all it takes is what you have in here. It's your heart. It isn't how strong you are isn't how tall you are, isn't how much you weigh. It's how big is your heart. That's what rowing is. And rowers know rowers. So in my life, okay, I started rowing when I was like old. I was in my late 30s. I rowed for a dozen years. I brought some medals with me. I don't even know what they are anymore. But I thought <laughs> I would put them on this really cool frame and put them in glass and now they're all focaccia but um you know you row for the hardware bottom line right <laughs> you row for the hardware and i have like so they all sat in a drawer for a long time until my husband said let's this is a mess what what are these and so they put them on on there for me so i always have next to my erg i have my medals which are a reminder to me you've been on an erg one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you love your erg? Who loves to erg? Seven. Come on. This is the indication of this sport. Have you seen the ergs? Have you seen them? Okay, you've been wrong. Yeah, I see you raise your hand. Did you raise your hand? Okay, I need it high. Because I'm old. I can't see as well as I used to. So the erg is a torture machine. <laughs> It'll tell you exactly where you are at all times. This is a sport where you may be in an eight, but it's really just you. You're racing you all the time. Every stroke, 2,000 meters down the course, from start to finish. I used to race my single, I'm a scholar. And I've been in the eights, I've raced in the eights, but I, I'm a sculler. 
and I would line up at the starting line and I would say to myself as they were counting it down, what am I doing here? <laughs> and then they would say, go. And it's a heart attack from start to finish. <laughs> but you finish. Okay, because once you start the race, there's no stopping. So if, if your friends think, ugh, you're a rower, that's just such a weenie sport, right? <laughs> weenie? Bring them to the erg. Have them sit down for 10 minutes. Put the rocker arm at about five, which is, you know, where you should be at, right? Have them do some, some sprints. Give them like 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off for 10 minutes and see who's still alive at the end, right? But I've been wounded rowing. I have stitches in my back from getting hit by a boat. It was totally my fault. Mm. So we were racing and we we're just warming up in the in the area. And uh, I saw the boat I was racing. It was it was you know a hundred yards behind me. I thought, oh, okay, I'll turn around in ten strokes. Well, in ten strokes we were colliding. So I got you know we both fell out of our boats. Hop back in. Everybody's okay. My boat was okay the most important thing and I'm bleeding I line up to the race I beat her because uh, I, I, you know, I had to because she made me bleed right <laughs> and then I go to the dock because it's a Henley cell race so we just keep going so I pull into the dock and and I say to the woman in the dock I'm, I'm like am I bleeding what? get out of the water you've got to get out of the water. so I had to go to the hospital so it's not a weenie sport you can't get hurt in rowing to show you another thing. So it's like my only muscle left. This bump right here. You see it? Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It looks like a little tiny muscle, baby muscle, right? So I'm racing Southwest Regionals in a double with Dee Dee Birch, who is just the most amazing rower ever. She's a beast. We're about we're about the five hundred. And I feel like someone has hit me with a spear, a spear that has fire on the end of it, right? And I can't stop. You can't stop. All I know is that I'm in pain that feels like I've just given birth to something. Unhuman. Inhuman. <laughs> and we keep rowing. We win. Because with Dee Dee, you just always win. There's no second place, or you, she kills you. Um, so we win, and I look down at my arm, and I have like this big knot on my arm. I have no idea what it is. Come to find out, it was some kind of muscle or tendon that snapped in the middle of the race, and it just rolled up on itself, and clearly I did not go and get it fixed. So this is my, this is my medal, right? <laughs> These are great, but this is my medal. So I guess what I'm trying to impart on you is... <laughs> You're very scary. No it's concussions. a super fun sport, right? <laughs> no concussions. No, yeah, no concussions. No. But it's something that becomes so much a part of you and who you are. It's how you define yourself. I mean, when you see people doing this you know, at a restaurant, you know they're rowers. They're trying to get the calluses off their hands. You know, it's it's a sport where you're not ashamed to tell anybody how much you weigh, mm -hmm. and as you get older, how old you are, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a sport of a lifetime. It truly is. It's the most remarkable gift I've I've given myself. I still consider myself a rower, even though I don't get on the water, because every body of water I pass, I'm like, wow, that is flat. <laughs> I have like water envy. <clears throat> I still erg. It's a crazy thing. I do love my erg. But this is a sport that defines who you are, not by someone else's assessment, but by your own assessment. You get to say to yourself, I'm good. I'm good at this. I row hard. I row fast. People can count on me in a boat. 
that's important because that translates to life. People need, or I need to know that people can count on me. And I know what I can give. This is a sport that I promise you, you will do things with your body and your mind that you've never done before. That you will dig deeper doing this than you ever thought you could. Just when you think you have no more to give, you will give more because you got another 10 strokes to get to the finish line. And you will give because you're capable of it. So I said mind. This is not just physical. You know, when you're out on the, out, well, when you're ergen, when you're out on the course, when you're in a race, when you're warming up, when you're, when you're going through workouts, you're going to start counting to yourself mm -hmm. and praying, please, can we finish this? Can we finish this? No. Because you're not done until you're done. Until you pull into the dock. Right? This is one of those sports. It is for everybody, but it's not for everybody. It takes a solid mind and a belief in yourself and faith in yourself that you can do this, that you have enough in your tank to give it all each time you go out there. And it sets you up for life because life's not easy. It's not easy. Looks easy from the outside. Rowing looks easy from the outside. You watch any Olympic races, you're like, Psh. so what they're rowing at a 36? <laughs> That's. It looks so, it looks so slow. Yeah, and that boat, every, every fiber of their being is screaming in pain. Every fiber. And it looks really easy from the outside, just like life. So this will be a test of who you are. Always. I've hired people because they're rowers because I know that they don't quit. Somebody tells me they're a rower, I know who they are. I know what they've gone through. I know what they give. And this is also a sport that differentiates you from all other athletes. There are people who get into college because they're rowers. This sport can give you so much in life. You put that on your resume, it means something. It says something about who you are. Anybody love rowing? Anybody here? Okay, raise that hand higher. I want to see who loves this sport. Good. That's a boat. One, two, three, four. <laughs> We got a quad, we got a four right here. And you know what, the beauty of this sport is that nobody forgets where they come from in rowing. Nobody forgets how they started. I, nobody forgets how many times, if you're a scholar, you fell in. The joke in my house was, when I left, my husband would say, don't fall in. I'd be like, the high probability of that. <laughs> but everyone who rows knows how hard it is and how hard it was to start. But if you love this sport, you will come out here in the rain. You will come out here in sleet. You will come out here on the hottest day in the last century. And you will row. This is a sport that's taken me to row in England. I rowed in the Old People's Henley. That's what we call it. Because we're all old. I've rowed in Ireland. And I, when I say sleet, I'm not kidding you. This race on the, um, the Corrib River, we started out, it was the day after St. Patrick's Day. Adults, you, could, you, you know the, the state of mind that we were in. <laughs> it was freezing cold. I mean freezing. And you know, you can't show up in a boat with like two sweatshirts and gloves and a hat. <laughs> You know, you just can't, because you know you're going to strip down in a minute, so why bother bringing it? We're freezing. 
started to rain. And then it started to sleep. And there were, it was a head race, so there were, and they do it differently over there, just like they drive on the other side of the road. But, so we all piled up to the start line. There, there were like a hundred boats. We were banging into one another. It, ugh, it was just insane. And you know, I like my personal space around my boat. We didn't, we didn't have any personal space. So sleet, rain, freezing cold, wind. We are in literally the weeds. And I'm not kidding you. When we started the race, the sun came out. This is no exaggeration. As we're passing by, not that I had my head out of the boat, not that I was looking at anything, <laughs> but somebody told me that as we passed the castle, there was actually a rainbow over this castle. Now, come on. I was, come up. I was, I was raised a poor black child. And there I was in Ireland. There were probably leprechauns down there somewhere. I don't know. But it was just the most amazing day. And there I was in Ireland rowing. There'd be no reason for me to go to Ireland. I had a ball. Rowing has taken me across the pond, so to speak. It's taken me in my own backyard. I've met people who are incredible. It has opened doors for me. I mentioned, or Gil mentioned that I'm, I'm running for election. That's a whole other story. But one of my supporters is Gary Rogers. And Gary Rogers, I would never know, I would never get to know this man. He used to run Dryer's Ice Cream. He basically built the Cal Boathouse. He has supported the Cal program um, for a long time. He was a rower. I would never get to meet this man, but I got to meet him because we were rowers. And we have a common language and a common understanding. That's what this sport gives you. It's what it's given me. It's what it's given the adults here who are, who are supporting you today. So if you love this sport, go for it. Let it beat you up. <laughs> let, it, let it teach you who you are. Because it has the capability of doing that. And I don't know that there's any other sport out there like it. So I applaud you for entertaining this and coming down here today and being part of a, of a much bigger world. A world that can lead you to places that you never dreamed you could go. Rowing is that kind of sport. So I thank you for listening to my tales. And I want to introduce, where's Peggy? Peggy. Come here, Peggy. Peggy. Peggy Johnson. Woo. Are you Peggy. limping? She's limping, but you're going to row, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> so Peggy, Dee Dee, and um, Eileen Hansen and I were in a boat, and we won a pretty big medal. Yeah, we won a big medal. We won uh, the World Rowing Championships. 2006 for old people. For old people. Oh. And that medal's on there somewhere. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's great to get the hardware, but it, it's the memory. Yeah. It's the memory. So, and Dana was a huge part of that. But would not have gone as fast with somebody else in it. Well, thank you. But really, this is the woman who was the stroke of the boat. And you're ferocious. You're a beast. Yes. That's because Dee Dee trained me. <laughs> <laughs> See, so you build relationships for life, too. So I, I can't. I can't encourage you any more um, than I have to participate with all that is you and then some. Thank you.